The virtual seminar on climate economics is hosted by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. It's been going for some time now, so if you sign up, what can you expect to see and hear? Hello, Glenn. Welcome. Hello, Tim. Now, Glenn, first question. Why is climate change the business of the San Francisco Fed? So why climate change in the Federal Reserve? Uh, I wrote probably the first article arguing that the Federal Reserve should be in this space. Uh, it was called Climate Change in the Federal Reserve, not surprisingly, and it came out uh, in March of 2019, uh, an FRBSF economic letter. But the Fed has two tasks, promoting macroeconomic stability and financial stability. And to do these well, of course, requires understanding how the economy evolves over time. Uh, some of the key forces transforming the economy, you know, the ones we've all heard about, technology, demographics, and climate change is also one of those. Climate change is going to change everything. Uh, it's got direct effects on the economy. Of course, we've seen all the headlines, uh, extreme weather events, hotter temperatures, rising sea levels, um, like we've seen this summer. Uh, it also has indirect effects because all the efforts to decarbonize the economy, to limit carbon, to limit climate change, uh, that transition to a low carbon economy is going to have wide ranging effects as well. So it's relevant for the Fed, you know, helping support macroeconomic stability, low inflation, but it's also relevant for the Fed's financial supervisory policy. The other big thing that, that people don't often don't realize uh, central banks uh, are involved in, but but it's another major role. Um, so I wrote a second economic letter entitled "Climate Change as a Source of Financial Risk," um, trying to get the the headline to to uh, give us the punchline as well. Uh, and that describes how the uncertainty that un uncertainty about the magnitude and timing of those economic damages from climate change translates into financial risk. This is something international financial regulators and supervisors. Uh, have increasingly warned uh, about uh, that the uncertainty, volatility, the economic transformation related to climate change uh, can threaten the stability of financial institutions and perhaps the financial system as a whole. So in both areas, uh, stewardship of the economy, uh, stewardship of the financial system, I think this is something the Federal Reserve has to pay attention to. So the second question, obvious question is, what inspired you to hold seminars about this? You know, I, I, when we started uh, in 2020, it was it was kind of bold for a central bank to get into that. Uh, I think to go back, um, I think it's fair to say that the economics profession as a whole has been slow to grapple with climate change. Uh, the top economics and finance journals published very few articles on climate change. Um, it's, it's very specialized, but climate change is interdisciplinary. So climate change touches on all the sub-disciplines of economics, macro, micro, finance, international development, environmental energy. And I think part of the reason climate change research has been slow to gain traction in the mainstream of the economics profession is that everyone is so pigeonholed in their particular sub-discipline. Uh, so last week, the NBR, or the last, last couple of weeks, the NBR has had this big conference called the Summer Institute. Um, and uh, there were, you know, a dozen climate change papers about climate economics. But uh, they were spread across all sorts of subdisciplines. There was one in monetary economics, a couple in the productivity group, uh, one in econometrics group. Uh, some, of course, in the environmental group. So again, it's got that, that broad reach, but it's hard to, um, it's hard to find uh, much traction when you're, you know, when it's so, when it's so scattershot. Um, so in 2019, interest was growing about climate economics. Uh, the, several journals announced special issues, uh, the Journal of Econometrics, the Journal of Financial Economics. And I helped organize a research conference on the economics of climate change in November 2019. Uh, that was the first Fed, Fed Reserve conference devoted to climate change. Uh, it was very successful. Had some great policy making, uh, policymaker speeches and, and research. And so in early 2020, we're thinking, oh, let's have another conference this year. Um, then the pandemic hit uh, in the spring of, of 2020, and we we pivoted and and our first. Uh, 
our first uh, climate economic seminar was in July 2020. And so it was the confluence of climate change with the, with the pandemic. There were other examples of virtual seminars in other areas, a virtual seminar on econometrics or financial or finance. Um, but again, I think more than that, uh, climate change is naturally suited to a virtual interdisciplinary uh, seminar. So we can include any field. We can have one week econometrics, another week bargaining theory or finance. Um, and I think it's helpful to foster a greater interaction and interest among researchers on this topic. We made the decision to launch a seminar open to everyone, which was, you know, we could have kept it just for Fed researchers, but, I, you know, there's a public good aspect to this. So in July 2020, we had uh, a, uh, our first seminar, and we've been going for one year, uh, one year anniversary. Um, the world has seen, seen extraordinary shifts over the, over the past uh, 12 months, but I think this explosion of interest in climate change and the virtual seminars uh, have been, um, you know, one, one small positive. So during that year, how often have you been able to hold a seminar? And they've all been open to everyone and everyone can find out what's been going on in these seminars, yes? That's right. So we've had one year of seminars, 23 so far. So uh, if I can use a Britishism, uh, fortnightly or almost fortnightly, uh, we'd probably say semi-monthly or, or even bi-weekly, but uh, uh, fortnightly sounds, sounds so cool. Um, it is open to everyone interested in research on the economics of climate change. Uh, we've got about 2,000 people registered. Uh, it's geared towards economists. I mean, this is a research seminar. Um, we also have recordings of all the presentations available on the website together with the papers and, and slides. Um, we tell everyone to present their work to the extent possible in a way that appeals to a, a general economist. So we hope to break down some of the silos, encourage a, a broader interdisciplinary uh, scope that's appropriate for, for climate change. Um, when I say interdisciplinary, I'm, I'm talking about economics. Of course, when scientists talk about interdisciplinary in this, in this regard, they're talking about biologists and chemists and oceanographers and Arctic scientists. Um, so we're inter we're interdisciplinary within our little our little our little uh, sandbox. So uh, economists like a good argument about well, more or less anything. So to use a, a, another Britishism, in your seminars, do you end up having a bit of a to do? We don't. I would say um, a, not a to do in the in the uh, common parlance. I would say there's certainly. Uh, important disagreements uh, uh, among uh, the uh, speaker, and we've got a you know discussion. We've got Q and A, um, so that that certainly comes up, um, but uh, it hasn't been uh, you know it's the usual give and take of of a seminar uh, to the extent you can do that uh, virtually. Of course, it's not quite like being in the same same room. Uh, there's never the threat of coming to fisticuffs, but um, uh, uh, it has been, I think, a great, great discussion, all trying to find, you know, trying to make some progress on, uh, on uh, nailing down the, the issues, the important issues of climate change. In amongst all those 23 seminars, are there any in particular that stick in your mind or any that change the way that you think about the subject? Yes, you know, I should say that um, in, in picking these speakers, um, I've got a great organizing committee, um, Michael Bauer at the University of Hamburg, Steffi Fried at, at Arizona State University in the San Francisco Fed, Oscar Jorda at UC Davis in the San Francisco Fed, uh, Tuan Fan is at the FRB Richmond. So a great mix of academic, Fed, Europe and, and the U.S., they've been invaluable. Um, uh, it has been it has been pretty easy to find speakers. I think um, there's a lot of good work being done. People are people are eager to uh, to present. I don't think I can pick favorites, but let me let me uh, pull up the the list here and, and and talk about some of the great examples just to illustrate the breadth of topics we've covered. Our, our first seminar, Jim Stock presented his work on the macroeconomic impact of of Europe's carbon taxes. As you know, economists love carbon taxes. 
uh, as the solution to uh, climate change. No one else does, but economists love it. Policymakers often express concern about the impact of carbon taxes on employment and, and, uh, and output. So Jim's paper is a great example of, of that interdisciplinary work combining macro, econometrics, international tax policy, and he finds no evidence of the car of a no evidence of a negative effect of the carbon tax on employment or, or GDP growth. Soon after, Simon uh, Dietz presented a paper called "Are Economists Getting Climate Dynamics Right and Does It Matter?" So that I thought was a pretty provocative title. Um, and his work goes to the issue that I raised about getting climate scientists and economists on the same page, and that's that's going to be crucial to solve this problem. Uh, he argued that economic models of climate change produce uh, climate dynamics with much too long of a delay between CO2 emissions and warming. That the, the recent climate science suggests that that uh, there's not much of a, of a lag there. Um, and and so for policy purposes, it's it's important to uh, to enforce that consistency, of course, between climate science and and economics. Something very different from these empirical economic studies was given by Rick uh, Vanderplog, who presented work called uh, titled Climate Policy and Asset Di Diversification. So Rick used a calibrated, more theoretical model, and it was a, and it was a finance model to, to consider asset pricing and, and climate policy uh, with, with two sectors, a green sector and a low carbon sector. Um, and sort of does the desire to diversify assets complement uh, climate mitigation. Uh, so you want to diversify. Do you always want to be in both green and brown uh, uh, assets? Um, initially, it can help uh, boost green investment, but in the longer run, diversification demand uh, may help prop up carbon assets. Finally, let me mention the work presented by Tama Carlton. Uh, on a, a data-driven approach to updating the social cost of carbon. This is something that's uh, on the front burner in the U.S. We are in the process of, of updating our, uh, the, the, the U.S. government is in the process of updating its social cost of carbon. And she provided uh, an, an overview of a, of a really impressive collaborative effort across economists, climate scientists, and computer scientists. And it highlighted the, the geographic disparities in climate impacts. Climate change is, is, is global, but its effects vary enormously locally. Um, in the past, these integrated climate economic models might have considered four or six or 12 geographic areas, but their research is considering data on 20,000 or 40,000 different regions globally to get this granular reading um, on the heterogeneity of, of climate costs. Uh, fascinating work and very timely, as I as I said. I mean, it's an incredibly impressive and diverse set of presentations, isn't it, Glenn? How long can you keep this going for? Is there a good pipeline of research out there? Is there a good pipeline of people who are willing to speak at your seminar? I think there is. There's a there's a really uh, you know we we have got we are booked up actually for the rest of this year, um, and. Uh, you know, every time I saw a paper this morning, I said, oh, I'd, I'd like to get that on there, but we've, we've got no room until 2021. So, um, uh, as I said, the, the virtual seminar on climate economics was prompted by this confluence of climate change and the pandemic. Well, the first of those is not going away. It, in, indeed, I think it's an area that calls out for more research. Uh, the pandemic has been stubborn, stubbornly persistent. So, I don't see a near term end. Um, the interest, the interest from the audience has been so. We've got both demand, interest from the audience has been has been immense, and I think a lot of supply. So, um, I think we could even support. You know, other people could consider this support more seminar series um, uh, in this area, uh, climate finance. Maybe, maybe they'll again. People think of specialized. So let's have a climate finance seminar, virtual climate finance seminar, or or some some area. But I think. We want to go for that interdisciplinary general, and and we've got we've got lots of lots of uh, great work uh, in the pipeline. Well, it is a fascinating series, Glenn. So if anyone wants to sign up for it, they can just go along to the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco website, and they'll find it there. And uh, then it's all open to them. That's right. That's right. It's just a uh, they'll get an invitation from Zoom. It's all handled through Zoom, so uh, uh, anyone anyone can sign up. 
great. Well, there's a lot of people now who know exactly what to do. Meanwhile, Glenn, thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. If you want to find the virtual summit on climate economics, where well, you can Google it, you can go to the San Francisco Fed's website, or else you can use this short link and it will take you straight there. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.